wireless client isolation is not enabled by default, so users connecting into a WLAN without wireless client isolation are going to be able to detect other devices that are also on that WLAN, and this is pretty common on trusted networks. So if you wanted to be able to print to a device that is also wireless or even stream to a device that is connected into that same wireless network, you're going to be able to discover it and complete that action. Enabling wireless client isolation on a WLAN is going to make it so that those devices can't communicate with each other directly, but they still can access their upstream gateways. This is going to be something that you would typically want to put on a guest WLAN, where you don't really want those devices interacting with each other. There are, of course, options to configure this where we can isolate different types of traffic depending on the need, and we're going to walk through those configurations right now. We're going to demonstrate the configurations for wireless client isolation from a smart zone perspective, but I am going to bring up Ruckus One on the screen here and show the configurations just really quickly. Uh, do know that they kind of map one to one. So if you're watching this video, the options that we're going to be selecting, you'll see the same things in your R1 environment. So you'll be able to apply this uh, to those WLANs as well. So I do have a guest Wi-Fi network that we've created. Um, and again, it does not have wireless client isolation on it. And if we go and look at the clients that are connected to it, uh, one of them is my laptop here at uh, 1.61. What I want to do is I want to bring up a command prompt here and show you that I can ping any one of these other devices. So 1.238, uh, I can ping that or 239. I can ping that as well. So without client isolation, I can communicate to both of these guys, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and enable client isolation. So let's walk through that. So I'm gonna go back to my WLAN, my Wi-Fi network, I'm gonna configure it. I need to scroll down to wireless client isolation and I need to go ahead and turn it on. And when I do, uh, you can see that it by default isolates unicast packets. So for the wireless client, anything destined to that specific client Mac is going to get um, isolated. It would not um, by default isolate multicast or broadcast on the WLAN. If you wanna do that, you can certainly do that if you enable this radio button. You can also enable support for VRRP or HSRP. So if you are running a uh, virtual router redundancy protocol in the environment and you have um, two devices that are kind of acting as your router with an active standby, um, you can enable that so that you don't accidentally lose your gateway in a failover scenario. So we could turn that on here. Um, I don't have my environment set up that way, however, so we're not going to do it. So for isolation whitelist, I'm actually going to go ahead and do this. So an isolation whitelist allows you to put a device in the exception list for isolation. So maybe you have a device that you want everybody to be able to access, a printer, uh, a media device, et cetera. Um, you can put that in here and you would, they would be able to access that. Uh, when you are doing that, you do need to also specify the gateway address along with that. I'm actually gonna modify this and choose edit so we can see what's going to go, what's kind of going on here. So we've got this named. Um, in my case, I actually chose auto whitelist. So what this is going to do is it's going to automatically detect my gateway information and put that in the whitelist. And then I've got the Mac and IP address of my smart zone device in here. So if I didn't have auto whitelist, I would need to create another entry specifying the gateways Mac and IP address. But with auto whitelist, I should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. So now I've got client isolation enabled for this WLAN, isolating unicast packets, and I also have this isolation whitelist. I'm gonna go ahead and choose okay. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect and reconnect all of my devices back into this WLAN and rejoin you momentarily. All right, so I've got my devices connected back up to this uh, guest WLAN that now has wireless client isolation. So let's go ahead and try to ping those devices. So let's see if I can ping 239. And it looks like it's going to be unreachable. And we can try 238 as well. And we cannot ping that. Uh, we will be able to ping our gateway address as well as our smart zone address. 
but that is all. So with wireless client isolation, you can see from a security perspective, this really limits um, the vulnerability uh, between those devices so that they're not able to communicate and discover each other so that those users can both enjoy an internet connection, but not really kind of interfere with each other's existence in the wireless LAN. We also have the idea of wired client isolation. And this comes into play when you have an AP that has multiple ethernet ports. So some of the products that we sell have multiple ethernet ports uh, on the access point and they're used in hotel rooms. So uh, if you have an AP that has four ports and you want users to be able to use those ports, but you don't necessarily want them to be able to um, talk to the other devices on the network, just like the wireless client can't, you can also enable wired client isolation. So if we go over to services, uh, tunnels and ports under ethernet port, um, I'm gonna just show where you can enable that. So we're gonna go ahead and create a non-default. So we're gonna create one and we're just gonna call it wired ISO. Uh, it's gonna be an access port and I'm gonna scroll down to wired client isolation here and you can see that it is off by default. So we do need to turn it on and it is gonna tell us that an AP boot uh, reboot is required. So if we choose uh, to turn that on, we get the message that it's going to be required. We're gonna choose okay. And you can see we've got the same exact options. So we've got that client isolation, we've got unicast, multicast broadcast, as well as the VRRP support and the gateway information. So again, I can choose the isolation whitelist again, and I'm gonna just say that's the only thing I really wanted to change on this port. It's an access port, um, but it's got wired client isolation. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that, and you can see we've got it here now. And if I go into my uh, access points and I go at a zone level and I go and edit that zone, I can go into the AP configuration profiles for specific devices and um, edit that information. So I am trying to do that now. Oh, I'm in the staging zone, that's why. Okay, so let me go into site A here, click the pencil, and let's go down to our AP specific information, AP model specific configuration. So here we go. Um, Obviously, I can select uh, one of the devices that's gonna have multiple ports, like the 550 here. So you can see this guy has four LAN ports. And if I wanted one of these ports to participate in wired isolation, I would click on the drop drop-down uh, and choose wired ISO. That's the port profile that I created. So then this particular um, LAN 2 port would be isolated just as the wireless clients are. So in terms of a Ruckus One configuration for this, uh, I do not believe that that actually exists right now for the wired ports on this. I know you can set them to access and trunk in general uh, to kind of limit the VLAN ranges on them, but I don't know that we have wireless isolation available in there yet because I don't think we can create those port profiles manually um, within the R1 uh, environment today. But you can utilize these configurations in smart zone. Um, hopefully you can get this working no matter what um, environment you're actually running for your ruckus access points. And that is how this feature works. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and we look forward to talking to you guys in the next one.